Hello everybody, this is Craig from Nine Bolt Games, and I'm going to turn the sound down so you guys can actually hear me. Let's do that, huh? Let's do that. So, anyways, um, I said that I would do a follow-up video for MKX, and I'm going to now that it's been two weeks. So you know what that means. Two weeks you wait for a server. And uh, the server is, you know, it's better than Mortal Kombat 9 to me. This, here's one bad point. Ready? Alright, so. One bad point I'm going to bring out is the online. And it's not necessarily while you're playing. Because while you're playing, it's been traditionally fine for me. However, I'm not going to lie when I say that it's not easy to pull off some of the more complicated and tight timing combos when you're playing this game. And... That's simply because there is a little bit of lag in the game. And I've had some lag that's been so atrocious that it's been frozen on my character's face during an x-ray. And we're all in the fucking king of the hill just talking. But that being said, there are a couple nights where I've had a full room of king of the hill. No bit of lag whatsoever until we get that one person who comes in with the shitty connection. They end up leaving anyways because we would berate them until they're gone. Um, so they got some work to do on this, uh, <laughs> on this server. The other thing is, on occasion, when I go into my faction, I go to Faction War page, sometimes it does this, and then it says, cannot connect to faction. And it's usually on times like, you just saw there was an invasion. Well, last night, it did not allow me to fucking do <laughs> the invasion. Uh, on top of that, yesterday I participated in this... Um, invasion I, I i did the tower and i did uh the invasion boss and it gave me absolutely no credit towards it whatsoever it told me that it was giving me x amount of points it was giving me coins i did this and it gave me nothing towards it and that kind of pissed me off the other thing is on occasion i will go to the towers and then it'll say there is no living towers now i'm only allowed to play this game i can't say let me let me rephrase that I can't say I'm allowed. I work during the day, so I can only play this game at night after my sons go to bed. And what happens is, if in that time frame it decides that it doesn't want to give me any living towers, it doesn't want to connect me online, I can't play online. And I'm, I've only got like, you know, a three hour window where I can actually play games during the day. And coming on here and, and being shot down to go online is it's kind of fucking frustrating because if my girlfriend's not here, I don't have anybody else to play with. I mean, I can try and play with Dan. If Dan's on, I can try and play with other friends, but if we can't get online, we can't get on fucking line. So, fix your servers. Please, make it so we can actually pull off combos, because some of us actually know what the fuck we're doing. We want to do things. Okay, and my other thing is with the story. Now, this is actually, I thought about this today, and this kind of pissed me off. So, for, I, I gave it two weeks, so hopefully those of you who actually want to play the story, you've already played it. Just unlock Shinnok, if anything. Through the story, we're going to do a single fight while I do this, so I can get my three fatality inputs. Um, through this, Throughout the story, Melina is said to be the uh, uh, the heir to Shao Kahn's throne. I had a problem with this today. I thought about this. This is a, this is a hole. So, Melina was made in, uh, you know, the likeness of Katana with, you know, Tatarkin blood. Okay. And that was Shao Kahn's daughter. Shao Kahn made Ermac, so technically wouldn't that make Ermac his son? On top of that, part of Shao Kahn is actually part of Shao Kahn's soul is in Ermac. So technically, wouldn't he be heir to the throne because he's more of Shao Kahn? And that just might be because I'm, uh, you know, I'm a huge uh, uh, Ermac fan. But still, I'm just speaking in terms of royalty. He would be more of a son than uh, Melina is a daughter. Because Katana wasn't even his daughter to begin with. And I don't know. The other thing is, the hero of the game is Cassie Cage. And I like that. I think Cassie Cage is, is an awesome character. I think she's got the best banter. And I want to be good with her. I know she's got so much potential. And I, I just want to be her. Uh, <laughs> I want to be, not be her, but I want to, uh, I want to be able to use her appropriately. And, hold on. I don't want to lose because I'm talking. I tried streaming yesterday and it's fucking terrible. All right. 
What happened is with these new characters, Cassie Cage, Jacqueline, Takeda, Kung Jin, they barely touched on these characters that they wanted to force down your throat. And that's okay, because like I said, they're good characters. I think Kung Jin is an awesome fucking character, and I think, I think we're going to see a lot of good things with Kung Jin. A lot of pros like to play Takeda, too. Why does he have all this armor when I keep hitting him? If anybody could explain that. All right, but uh, they did not, they did not do enough with developing the characters. And I know it's a fighting game, but Mortal Kombat primarily, you know, thinks of the single player. And what I like about it is they actually put a story mode in. Well, they put a story mode in MK9. So guess what? I'm gonna start being picky because I feel like the characters, the new characters, if they really wanted you to care about them, they should have better developed them. I feel like everything was a bit rushed. And I swear to God, if they put out, this is going into the next point that I don't really like about the game. Um, forward back, forward back, sorry. Okay. In the, in, if they put a, a extension on the story for DLC, I'm gonna be pissed. So yes, yeah, so let's bring it into that. Here's my number one complaint about this game is the fucking DLC. Now, I understand that, you know, Jason Voorhees is third party and the Predator is third party and it, it probably caught him, cost him a bit of money to get the likeness uh, rights to put them in the game. Maybe some convincing on their end. But Tremor and Tanya, Tanya in itself is one of the worst characters from Mortal Kombat fucking 4, okay? Tanya is one of the worst characters. I don't understand her inclusion in this game. On top of that, she's already in the goddamn game. Why are we paying for characters whose models... Uh, Granted, there's no variation, but the models are in the goddamn game. So, basically, if I see any of these other characters come out as uh, DLC, you know, Baraka and such, I'm going to be pissed. As a consumer, I'm going to be rip shit. <laughs> you know, I, I understand, like I said, they're, they're all stripped of variations. None of them have variations, and um, that's okay. But, here, let's... I'm going to be Cassie Cage. But the DLC is horrendous. And it's not so much like, obviously we can expect DLC characters in fighting games because that's the wave of fighting games. That's what we do. Um, but having them like make a big deal out of it to spend $30, that's a ridiculous price for a season pass for characters. Oh, you get some costumes. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the, the $30 for the, the extra characters is insane to me. And then more so if you pay for them by themselves. Uh, that's already crazy enough. I feel like DLC character packs should have been set with uh, Mortal Kombat 9. They were it was 14.99 something like that, and that was okay because that was four new characters. But these characters are being promoted pre-launch, and that is that's atrocious to me. You should be bringing up more hype about these new characters that you put in the game that you didn't develop properly in the story mode. <laughs> Then worrying about, oh my god, Jason Voorhees is coming. Give us an extra $30 on top of the 60 that we're already asking you to pay for characters that we ain't really going to show you shit about. So, I mean, it's... I threw that x-ray, I didn't even need to. It's, it's kind of offensive to me. And I, I understand that DLC is the way of the future because guess what? People will buy it. Am I going to buy the combat pack? No. Did I get the combat pack with my game? Thought about it. Changed my mind. I, I don't want to spend $30 on on four characters and one of which I don't really care about. I don't want to play as Tanya. Um, I do want Predator and I do want Jason and I think those are the only two that I'll download and then when the Complete Edition comes out with Mortal Kombat, I always buy those anyways so I'll, I'll get that when it comes out but I'm not going to go ahead and, and endorse this fucking combat pack bullshit. And then the easy fatalities. Here's one thing I'll say about easy fatalities is... Oops. If you're buying them because you can't do the already easy fatalities in this game, you're a dumb dumb. That is, uh, easy fatalities is the horse armor. <laughs> yeah, from Oblivion. It is the horse armor. You don't need to buy it. Please don't buy it. I want them to take that shit down and be like, you know what, maybe this is a bad idea. Oh! Selfie. But yeah, they, they are really promoting the shit out of the DLC. And you know what, guys? When it comes to the characters, like really think about if you want the characters or not and who you actually want, if you want all the characters. Because there is three variations of every character, and there's so much tech to learn with every character that 
I mean, unless you just want to go online and, and play with friends who don't take the game seriously, I can see if you want to have those characters, but I can't, I can't see justifying spending $30 on it. But if you actually are serious about being competitive in this game, I don't see why you would need to buy them right away because there's so much shit for you to learn. And there's so much shit for you to do. And there's so much shit for you to unlock in the crypt. Do not spend that $20. That's another ridiculous thing. The crypt is one of the, the great things of Mortal Kombat since the crypt's induction in the 3D game. Like, why are you going to pay $20 to have that unlocked? I understand maybe you want all the costumes and stuff, but that's the fun metagame. Go online. Look where the things that you want are hidden. Go through and find them and unlock them by earning your coins. You know? Don't pay for that. Don't pay for this frivolous shit that they don't need to have up there. Like the Blue Steel Sub-Zero. Available now. You gonna buy it? No. Wait for the fucking Complete Edition. Don't allow companies to do this shit by buying into it. Ugh. So those are my complaints about Mortal Kombat X. Just so everybody thinks that I'm not like fucking paid to say great things. Because I'm not. Ed Boon's actually a, a, kind of a dick to me. Uh, anytime I've ever actually got to talk to him. He's very dismissive. But... Everything else about the game is fantastic. The gameplay itself is fantastic. Tight. Best best uh, Mortal Kombat game to date. Um, and the roster as it is without all the DLC is fucking fantastic. And I like it. And I like the new characters. And I think they did a great job with it. Just not with the story mode. Not with this ridiculous DLC. And fix your fucking online. Thank you for watching.